you have lined up for today's D-Lab basic training session. Well, what's the deal? Fink has a sock on his head. What are you doing, man? Alright, today we have a tube amplifier. The output tubes are running hot. The audio is cutting out. Three things to consider. Is it a bias problem? Is it worn tube sockets? Is it a bad set of output tubes? So here's what we're going to do. First, we'll do my typical unpowered visual inspection. If we get past that, we're going to go power the amp up and check that negative bias. And if we get past that step, then we'll perform repair, add some current sensing resistors, bring the amp back to life, and see if it's stable. So the amplifier on the bench is a Fender Bassman. The owner told me that he hears the audio intermittently cutting out and sometimes when he looks in the back one of his tubes is red plating. That's a sure sign of losing negative bias. If both tubes were red plating I would say it could be the negative bias supply but since it's one that sounds like a bad connection in the tube socket. So during my visual inspection and I know this is probably very difficult to see I can tell that the contacts in these tube sockets are spread out so they're not contacting the pins correctly on the output tubes. When you lose your negative bias, the tube goes warp drive and red plates. So what we'll do is take a tube and see how well they're seating in the socket. Alright, so these alligator jaws make it a little bit difficult to do this test. But what you want to do is pull those guys down so they do not grip the base. Take your tube and see how well it seats. And look at that. It almost falls right in the socket. Okay? There's very little contact. So yes, it's a worn tube socket. We'll go over here and try the other one. Same deal. These sockets have seen better days. Now the thing that you don't want to do and people do this time and time again, is you take a little screwdriver and you put it in there and you say, I'm going to reform these tube sockets. Well, guess what? You can do that and it'll appear as though you fixed it, but after that metal has fatigued, there's little microscopic cracks in that material and they just can't hold the tension. They'll become loose again and the problem will return. But there's a bigger safety issue that I need to show you. So I've seen a lot of people in the field do this. So the chassis is actually installed in the amp so it's upside down and they really can't see well what they're doing, right? And every time this goes on, I just cringe waiting for a very unpleasant reaction. So a lot of guys will take a screwdriver or an X-Acto knife and they'll put it down on the side of the pin and they'll just kind of tweak it to make those contacts close. Remember, you've pulled your output tubes so there's no current discharge path now for the high voltage. So if I were to take my meter, now this amp's off, okay? It's been off for a while, but if you measure pins three or four, that high voltage is there waiting for you. So here is pin three. There's 110 volts. There's 102. Now if I were to briefly plug this amp in, and unplug it. Look at there. There's 420 volts. And it's not discharging very fast. So if you were to pull your output tubes and go in there and get ready to tweak, you might lose your fingernails. We've isolated the problem to the worn tube sockets, which is on our list. And of course, that affects the bias. And after a short period of time, will fry your output tubes. So here's some words of advice, guys. If it's worn, replace it. Do not reform it. I know that there's that tendency to want to do that, but just imagine your output tubes go bad, you tweak the pins, you put in a fresh set, assuming that the problem is fixed. After a short period of time, they fatigue and your tubes start red plating again. By the time you figure it out, you just lost another set. This is all about preventative maintenance and extending the life of your amplifiers. We all need to start paying attention to these little details. 
One point that I cannot stress to you guys enough is the lethal voltages that these amplifiers can produce and you can easily come in contact with it. For example, in their tweaking a tube pin to reform it, you got your hand on the chassis, contact high voltage, you have a direct path through your heart and that could be lights out. So now, I think I know why he had a sock on his head. We'll see you again on D-Lab's basic training.